Hey everyone, it's Jay and Sean. And this week we are talking about what's new on Netflix. It is the neither rom nor com, but I don't know what other genre it fits under. It's called The Half of It and it's now released on Netflix. So, the half of it. Going right in, just based on this young cast, I thought it was gonna be a lot more like to all the boys I loved before. It was not. Did you like the half of it? I thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it didn't grab me. Okay. But I'm not the target audience. I mean, I'm probably not. Far from the target audience. Oh, far from it, eh? Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. About 25 years away from it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, it's That's terrifying. Shocking. <laughs> okay. So it is about uh, some kids in high school. Ellie Chu is our young protagonist. She um, is a social outcast except for the fact that she writes essays for hire. Uh, all the kids, it seems, in her high school seem to employ her services and even the teachers are in on it and totally okay with it because it sure beats reading essays that suck. Uh, you know, I had a little trouble with that part, let's just say. Yeah, it's <laughs> a bit spongy, but it's a small town, so mm -hmm. who knows? Maybe so. they really don't care about their jobs <laughs> and there's a joke about the union, God being afraid of the union, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, maybe they're secure. Maybe they really don't care. Maybe they really don't care. So, uh, Ellie lives with her dad, who seems to be uh, in a deep depression. So she is doing his job and she's writing for money so she can pay the bills. And she's hustling pretty hard. And uh, one day, when the power company has just threatened to cut off their power supply, happens to be the day that a football player asks her to write romantic letters to the most beautiful girl in the school, Aster. It's and pretty convenient. It, <laughs> but also, she wouldn't have written those letters if she didn't really need the money. So yeah. Because, like, morally, happen. that's not just cheating. It's like, those are supposed to be personal. And to be fair, he does suck at it quite a lot. He does. He needs yes. the help. He does need the help. Um, but the problem is that Ellie is so good at it. She is too good at this job. So Aster actually does start paying attention to this, you know, football guy, even though she is dating the most popular guy in school, who's an ass. He really is. Yes. Which is why he's so popular. <laughs> I, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> this, I mean, this town does have some weird stuff going on. But anyways, her, her letters back and forth, I mean, written letters, written letters, y'all. Handwritten, yeah. Handwritten letters go back and forth and uh, Ellie is so witty and they are, they just are like, you know, twinsies, having a twinsy moment where they get each other, they reference the same authors and thinkers and it's a beautiful thing, except for when she finally consents to a date with this guy and he's a complete disaster in person. Yeah, because he's got nothing to say because he knows nothing about any of what's no, going on. they have nothing in common. He, you know, he has not even looked up these things that he's apparently quoting. He can't talk about any of them. And he's about as good in person as he is on paper. Even though he's like a sweet guy, but he really is not that deep a thinker, I think. So, you know, then the, you know, beautiful young woman Aster is wondering what the heck is up with this guy. It's and like he has um, two personalities. It is like that, isn't it, Sean? Yes. Oh, boy. It's always the one problem with the Cyrano Roxanne arrangement. Uh huh. You gotta hold up your end of the bargain in person. Oh, boy. It's yeah. true. Like, don't slack off. If you, like, he believes that he is in love with her, which, yeah. I mean, okay. He it's hasn't even talked school. to her. He hasn't ever talked to her. He All he she's knows hot. is, yes. Which is fair. <laughs> sure, you want to go on a date with her. A lot of stuff starts out that way. But now that he sees that she's really engaged with this, you know, I mean, it's sad. He just can't quite get there. Although even just seeing this guy try makes Aster realize, you know, that this other guy that she's still currently dating 
and partly gonna marry because she's the preacher's wife. I mean, she's the preacher's daughter. She's not the preacher's wife. She is also in high school. She's the preacher's daughter. So apparently that's her fate is just to stay in this small town of and he can take over the church from her dad. Yeah, Squahamish, yeah. which always bugged me. That's a really I know terrible it did. name. You really had a hard time with that. <laughs> of all the things to nitpick in this movie. They keep showing the signs with the name on it. Or mentioning, <laughs> yes, they do. They're very hey, proud we're going to be sign. stuck in Squahamish mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to keep repeating it. I know. Well, I think once you've learned to spell it, you have to stay there for life. Right, that's because... true. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it was kind of a sad and depressing movie and for a lot of reasons. Also, it seems hard to, um, that these weren't even emails, that they were like handwritten letters in 2020. 